Guns N' Roses original drummer Steven Adler would be with the group from its inception in 1985 until 1990 when he was fired. Adler would play on the group's landmark record Appetite for Destruction and their follow-up EP GNR Lies, but it was during the recording of their double album Use Your Illusion 1 and 2 that he was fired from the group due to his escalating drug use that hampered the recording of the records. But 20 years after Appetite for Destruction came out, Adler would be kidnapped by his own brother and that's what we're going to explore in today's video. It was shortly after his firing from Guns N' Roses that Steven Adler sued his former bandmates, alleging they made him sign away his rights to any royalties from his time in the band. In 1993, the suit would be settled out of court. In the subsequent years, he would be involved a bit with music, at one time claiming to have auditioned for ACDC and started a band called The Road Crew. By the late 90s, he'd have a brief stint with the band Bullet Boys, who I've done a whole history video on on my channel, the link is down below. The two decades following his firing from Guns N' Roses saw Adler involved heavily with drugs and having numerous run-ins with the law. In 1996, he'd suffer a stroke from his drug use that would forever impact his speech. By 2007, things really hadn't improved in his life and he was on death's doorsteps. It would be his younger brother who would kidnap Steven in a last ditch effort to save his life. Hailing from Cleveland, Ohio, the Adlers were a middle class Jewish family. Steven's mother, Deanna, had two sons from two different fathers and she would eventually relocate to Los Angeles where she met another Ohio native named Melvin Adler who adopted both of her sons who are now 10 and 7, with one being named Kenny and the other Michael. Michael would eventually be renamed Steven. Then three years later, Deanna gave birth to her third son, Jamie. Jamie would tell Yahoo Entertainment, my father was a real street guy. He lived this crazy life. He would always tell me stories about Cleveland, his friends being blown up in cars or murdered. It was like, no way this is all true. 2011, Hollywood would put out a film called Kill the Irishman that contained many of the same tales Jamie heard from his dad as a kid. His father would work for Southern Pacific Railroad before becoming a bookie, where he employed Jamie to answer phones for him. Despite coming from a big family, Jamie admitted to feeling lonely since he was considerably younger than both of his brothers, and Stephen was rarely around getting into so much trouble that at one point he was eventually exiled to his grandparents' house in Hollywood. Jamie would tell Yahoo, he was this wild crazy guy, never believed in rules, he'd just stay out all hours of the night partying and getting wasted. But my brother in my eyes could do no wrong. Whenever I saw him, he would give me the biggest hug. By 1985, Steven would become the drummer for Guns N' Roses, who by 1986 begged a multi-album deal with Geffen Records. The following year they'd release their debut record Appetite for Destruction, whose title perfectly encapsulated Steven's personality. Jamie would reveal to Yahoo that by the end of 87, he first learned of his brother's drug addiction, as Doug Goldstein, who worked as part of Guns N' Roses management, told Steven's parents about their son's dangerous behavior and assured them that he was going to rehab in Arizona for a full month. By the time Steven's parents planned on visiting him in Arizona at the treatment center, he left after only three days. By the time Appetite for Destruction blew up on the sales charts in 1988, Steven had shut out most of his family from his life, with Jamie telling Yahoo, he basically never left the house for the next two years. Steven didn't talk to us. He disowned us because he was in this downward spiral. It was over the next several years, Steven would reconcile with his family, only for it to fall apart. Then in August of 1990, Guns N' Roses frontman Axl Rose would announce to the world that Steven Adler had been fired from Guns N' Roses during an interview on MTV with Kurt Loder. It was by the mid-90s and subsequent decade that Jamie became a big-time booking agent, working with the likes of Motorhead and Danzig, as well as hip-hop acts. But he soon also fell prey to drugs and partying, albeit for a short period of time. By the 2000s, Steven was now residing in Las Vegas, and in 2007, he was lying in a hospital fighting for his life. He was suffering from a serious blood infection that could have led to doctors removing one of his eyes. Jamie would recall to Yahoo, the doctors told him and my mom that he needs to take this medication for the next 30 days to clean out his blood. If he doesn't do this, he will die. I said, this is going to be my last hurrah with my brother. This is going to be the last time I'm going to be able to try to save this guy. I needed to get him under control. Not trusting Steven to take his prescribed medication, Jamie devised a plan to stage an intervention, calling his old friend Slash. Things didn't exactly go as planned as Steven lashed out at his old bandmate, blaming him for his problems. Jamie was able to get Steven administered to a hospital for 72 hours, telling the staff that he was a threat to himself and it gave him a head start on administering his pills. But things didn't go smoothly as Steven was difficult towards the hospital staff, with his brother recalling to Yahoo, we're gonna go and literally kidnap this dude. 
After 72 hours had passed, Jamie offered Stephen a milkshake with enough medication to, and I quote, kill a horse. Once Stephen was knocked out, it allowed Jamie, along with some friends, to transport him from Vegas to Los Angeles, with him recalling to Yahoo, I'm committing so many f***ing felonies at this point, but the one thing I did know is I had so many witnesses, so many people in our lives that would go to bat for me, God forbid the cops came for me, because everybody around Steven knew he was going to die. Back in LA, Jamie would shuttle Steven between three homes that had 24-7 security guards named Shadow and G, whose job it was to administer Steven's medication, and of course keep a watchful eye on him. Escape was virtually impossible, but that didn't stop Steven from trying to break out and having to be physically restrained. There was one time where Steven managed to get his hands on a cell phone and call his dealer back home in Vegas, who sent a FedEx package to one of the homes. When the package showed up, the guards confiscated it, finding drugs hidden inside a microphone. Steven wasn't aware by this point that his younger brother Jamie was at all involved with the kidnapping, and Jamie soon enlisted musicians to come stop by and talk some sense into Steven, and even Dr. Drew stopped by, and he was aware of the whole kidnapping ordeal. After a month, Jamie revealed himself to his brother, to which Steven responded, You could keep me here for a week, a month, a year, ten years. As soon as I leave here, the first thing I'm going to do is go get high, and there's nothing you can do about it. After Steven finished his medication and was released, he headed back home to Vegas and continued down the rabbit hole of addiction. But a few months later, he had a change of heart and wanted to get clean. In 2008, Stephen would appear on the VH1 reality series Celebrity Rehab with Dr. Drew and the program Sober House. Since the early 2010s, Stephen seems to be doing a lot better according to his brother. But Jamie and his mom's relationship with Stephen seems to go through its cycles where they speak and then they don't speak. Stephen would write in his 2010 autobiography about the whole ordeal. I couldn't blame Jamie and his accomplices though because deep down I knew that I hadn't given them any other chance. Later I wondered whether the way they had gotten me to LA could be viewed as a federal offense. I have no evidence however, no way of proving that they deceived me, kidnapped me and taken me across state lines against my will. Besides they were trying to help me and what's done is done. Steven has made numerous appearances during Guns N' Roses Not In This Lifetime tour in 2016. While his brother Jamie now lives in Australia, has a family and has become a devout Christian and still has a successful management company. That does it for today's video guys and we'll see you again in Rock and Roll True Stories.